안녕하세요. 아, uh, hello. <laughs> I'm not Korean speaker, but I like to try some Korean first to open up this topic. Uh, I am Chao Wu from Alibaba Club, and this is Yang Nan Li. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Yang Nan Li. My uh, GitHub username is uh, Alex Lwn, and you can. Uh, uh, access my my uh, my PR and my code uh, from Kata containers. Thank you. Okay, today our topic is towards Kata container 4.0, full life cycle GPU management for AI and machine learning workloads. So our presentation will cover those six topics. First, we will give a very brief introduction about the Kata containers because I think maybe there are some new 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 be here. Uh, who is not very familiar with Kata containers. Okay, well, um, so what is Kata containers? We have a slogan that we, the, the Kata container has the speed of container and the secu security of VM. So let's first dive into how the concept of the Kata containers, sorry, the concept of Kata containers have evolved. First, we run our applications on the bare metal with bare process. Then we find some performance issues and the security issues because we cannot um, cannot separate those different process um, rightly. So then we introduce containers using technology like C group or namespaces that they can uh, isolate different process into different containers. Then we still find. Although this is a very good approach, then we still find it is it got some security issues because all the containers they are sharing the same host kernel, and if there is one malicious user that uh, want to do some bad things to that host kernel, then the whole uh, machine will uh, the other user and the whole machine will have some bad effect, and then this is why Kata containers uh, evolve. Because and, and developed because we use a uh, light virtualization layer outside the containers, and then the all the containers are running inside the light virtualization, so that the malicious users or bad users they cannot break out from the gas kernel, and then they, uh, if there's one bad users there, they cannot affect all the other users and the whole the whole host. <laughs> so please, yeah. And then there are two very common use cases for the kind of containers. The the first one is the multi the multi tenancy scenario. This is very common in the cloud provider like my company Alibaba Cloud. Um, um, some products like functional computing or other products they, they we will. Uh, sell the same machine like to different users, and then they cannot use these. Uh, uh, they, not, they cannot use the containers. Only they cannot only use containers because there may be some performance issues and security issues. So that we use Kata containers to wrap around the containers, uh, the traditional containers, so that the user can, so that the cloud platform can have a multi multi tenancy uh, experience. So in this use case, we can deploy multi-tenancy containers inside one node and provide external services in container form, uh, which is called PaaS, Container as a Service. And then what we use, the advantage of the Kata containers, first is, is, is a strong security isolation, because we isolate the container inside the virtualized, light virtualizations, we can have the strong security isolation so that one bad user cannot affect others. Um, and besides, we have low overhead, quick start, and high con con concurrency advantage because we use technology like light virtualization. It is not a very heavy virtualization like other virtualization. Yes. And the other user case is multi-SIO uh, service level objective scenario. This is also used in the Alibaba company. The use case attribute is that users want to deploy jobs with different SLOs in the same nodes. Uh, because sometimes during the night time, uh, some, some applications may, might have very low CPU, utiliz CPU utilization or memory utilizations. And during the daytime, it might have a very high 
uh, supervised agents. And then some companies want to fully use the capacity of the machines so that they deploy the uh, regular applications in UNC of the traditional containers that they can fully use their power during the daytime. And when at nighttime, um, they, 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 they don't have that very high secure utilizations. We also deploy some Tata containers inside the same host that they can fully use the CPU or memory or GPU resources um, when the, the run C or the regular application is not very high in, use, in the usage. So in this case, we use the advantage for Tata containers thing, uh, because it has a very strong performance isolation, isolations and then very strong fault isolations. And even though the we don't want the Kata the application inside the Kata container to affect the uh, workloads inside the uh, C or the regular container uh, port. Yeah, this is the an another scenario we actually use in our deployment. So those are the very common use cases for the Kata containers inside uh, different companies, and then. Also, we want to have a very brief introduction of the overall, overall architecture of the Kata containers. There are three very import, important components inside the Kata container. The first one is the, the container design Kata V2. Also, it, it is called Kata Runtime. Its responsibility is, to, is for taking the instruction from the container D and to spawn different containers. And the second important component is the VMM. VMM which is a short uh, case for the virtual machine manager. And then it is used for taking the instruction from the community chain Kata V2 to actually spawn and produce a virtual machine to hold the containers. And then the last uh, very important component is called Kata agent inside the, inside the port, inside the guest uh, virtual machine. But this is uh, because because community chain Kata V2 is, uh, is, is outside from the virtual, virtual machine, so it cannot strictly produce the container. So Kata agent is kind of like a proxy for the community chain Kata V2, and it can take the instruction from the Kata, uh, chain Kata V2, like when we want to produce a container inside the VM, and the chain Kata V2 will give this instruction to Kata agent, and the Kata agent who is the actual uh, component to produce the container. Uh, so those are the three very important components and they are in three different process. Also, we have other technology like virtual, virtual FSD. This is for if user want to use virtual FS to share the, the share the fail between the guest and the host and also NAMAS D for the ima image acceleration. So this is the so uh, the Kata 2.2.0 version is a very classic Kata containers architecture. And last year, or the last two years, we, intu we introduced a new architecture called Kata containers 3.0. The main change is that we merge all the process into one single process. So this is only one host process per pole. Per pole. I have mentioned that we have process like Kata, Kata, Shin, Kata Shin or Kata Runtime and the VMM. So we merge those two processes together and into one process. They are communicated through the within, within process. Um, so we have a built-in hypervisor built-in into the Kata Shin called Dragon Ball and a built-in image manage, management. We build in the Nada speed. And also, we, we, we actually we actually building everything we can build in. We have building in the virtual FSD, building Nada SD, so that we can have a very extreme performance behavior. Also, it can reduce the overhead because we use Rust to rewrite everything uh, in the Kata Containers 3.0 architecture. It is already open source, and we have open source it for like two years, and still growing and growing and it is ready to use. So those are the uh, like the basic technology and uh, the current uh, architecture of the Cardia containers. And then we head to the main topic today, it's about the GPU man management. Because GPU management nowadays is a very hot topic, both in the 
open source community or in our company um, because the, the, the rise of the AI. So the current state of the art uh, of the Kappa Canyons, uh, Yang Nan will later give a very deep talk, give, give a very deep talk introduction about it. But I like to mention some current problem now. There are two problems about the current uh, uh, GPU management for Kata containers because Kata containers it creates a virtualization layer so that um, it is very hard for container D to 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 ask for the resources. So we have the very dirty things to make that works for Kata containers to produce and uh, uh, to do GPU management. And nowadays we have two problems. Right? The, on the whole side, we need to inject different annotations about the uh, like PCI device BDF or gas, gas the driver, GPU driver uh, information or GPU MA switch information, which is uh, which is very which is not a very common in the whole K K K K yeah. Kubernetes link. And then the the problem too is the gas gas side. We need to have very many vendor specific container hooks intruded into gas gas code. So there will be lots of not traditional and uh, standardized standardized uh, code into the Kata containers, and and sometimes the vendors like Amedia they need to develop inside the Kata container so that it can work to uh, to have to like Kata container to produce GPU management. So that we don't think this is a good thing. We should we think this should be a standardized ways to to do GPU management. So this is what we propose in the Kata Container 4.0 area. Because we have found those three challenges and uh, challenges like there are some, there are complex and error pro configurations. There are, because it's not standardized, we need to hack anything in, into the Kata, in the Kata Containers. And then there is a limited flexibility and scalability because we have inject everything into annotation, and annotation is not very easy to change. And then there's a lack of a unified standard, which is what we want to propose next. next. And then Yang Li will have a deeper introduction about the new solution, which is we discuss with the media, and then we um, propose this whole. Thanks, Cho. <coughs> Let's start the journey of CDI. Uh, uh, before uh, I introduce the CDI solution, uh, first of all, we should uh, uh, understand what is CDI. CDI is the sort of container device interface. It is a uh, since dev tech sponsored uh, open source project, and it it aims to standardized how complex devices are pro, uh, come, uh, exposed to exposed to containers. It is uh, our specification for long time to support the party uh, hardware devices in a standardized way. Our CDI solution devices are abstracted as resources and uh, they are uniquely uh, identified by uh, by fully uh, fully qualified names. Uh, for example, uh, vendor.com uh, class uh, equal device name. And uh, it provides comprehensive device definitions with device nodes, mounts, uh, environment values, and uh, hooks to uh, precisely control access. With CDI spec, uh, and uh, it will map the specification it will uh, map it to the specified OCI's runtime spec modification. Uh, there is a now, uh, now there, there, uh, there, there are two implementations, the Golang version and the Rust version. Uh, the, Golang, the Golang version is uh, um, integrated in container D and the other container engines. Um, for example, Podman. And the Rust one is uh, 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 de uh, developed by uh, Danko, Danko Kaider and I, uh, and it is now used in Kata Agent. Now, uh, why choose CDI? There are a lot of uh, advantages of CDI. 
uh, it is a unified and a standardized approach to device access in container. It offers a unified standard uh, for accessing hardware devices within containers providing a consistent user experience. And uh, it uh, uh, can define uh, and uh, it, uh, it provides a flexible vendor customization. Vendors can define their own rules allowing for tailored experience and uh, meeting specific, specific requirements. Decoupling hardware vendor definitions for long time uh, implementations promotes uh, scalability and extensibility. Now, let, let, let's, uh, uh, let's introduce how a CDI works. Vendor tools, uh, vendor tools generate a CDI. In this picture, vendor tools, uh, vendor tools uh, generate the CDI specs and it will re uh, serialize relevant data uh, like uh, devices, libraries, and execu uh, executables, and uh, other relevant data into files with the uh, with a structure file format uh, like JSON or YAML. Uh, be, uh, during uh, container creation, CDI devices uh, are forwarded to the high level runtime, uh, and then with the CDI devices, CDI will read the CDI specs and apply uh, modifications to the offset spec. Based on the most mo modified OSS spec con containers, runs and understand how to utilize devices. Now let's introduce redefine a GP management in Kubernetes Kata with CDI. To better grasp the uh, to better grasp the uh, the c c c c sequent design. Uh, it's necessary to have a, a basic understanding of the di distinctions in device access between RONC and Kata. Um, RONC uh, will directly, uh, RONC containers the uh, access host devices through device mapping while uh, under utilizing, uh, under utilize host devices drivers for management, while Kata uh, introduces an extra uh, virtualization layer, and uh, we we must uh, first first uh, device um, we must first uh, assign host devices to VM with a PCI pass through, and uh, then containers within kind of, uh, VM access devices through device mapping. As we can see that, um, kind of containers in uh, introduces an uh, extra step. Compared to RONC directly direct uh, device access. Okay, uh, that's uh, let's first delve uh, uh, delve into RONC access GPU with CDI. Vendor tools generate in this case. Vendor tools will generate uh, CDI specs and uh, describe how devices are exposed to containers. Then, uh, device plugin allocate uh, GPU generation, uh, allocate uh, uh, response with the CDI devices. Uh, then, uh, next, uh, Kubelet will forward uh, CDI devices, uh, for example, Nvidia Dock, uh, uh, dock uh, com GPU equals 2 to container D. Container D uh, with CDI will read the CDI specs and apply modifications with the uh, all set spec. The forward, the container D will forward the modified all set spec to run C. The next day, step is to run a container. That's, uh, that's how run C utilizes GPU with, uh, with, with CDI. But uh, directly uh, up, apply device access for containers with run C to Kata wouldn't work due to the fundamental uh, differences in device usage. And uh, remember that uh, Kata introduces uh, additional virtualization 
and uh, requirement require device uh, assignment uh, before uh, divide uh, before containers in uh, within Kata VM access device. Another before CDI, we use the annotation to forward the VVL device information uh, to cut a runtime. But uh, this, uh, this solution lacks standard, stand, standard standardization. So uh, GPU device plugin generates a CDI spec for VVL uh, devices, and continuity CDI maps this device to the OCS spec. After modific modified OCS spec forwarded to color runtime, which performs a uh, device pass through container annotation and other necessary works. To enable Kata utilize devices, an additional CDI layer within the guest introduced to help handle device mapping. This CDI is responsible for modifying the OCI spec to map device related to files into the containers, enabling the container to directly uh, utilize the path through tissues. But please note that this solution requires pre-installed tissue driver within the rootbs image. And th thus, uh, a two-tier two CDI system is employed where each uh, tier plays an auxiliary or proxy role in processing and these uh, tiers uh, these tiers uh, give us uh, these tiers uh, include outer CDI and inner CDI. The outer CDI is responsible for mapping hardware to the outside spec in the form of uh, VVL devices and passing them to uh, the color runtime. The inner, the inner uh, CDI mainly is the cutter agent directly responsible for injecting uh, modif modifications to the container OCS spec within guest and uh, consequently affecting the container device usage. To better understand the two-tier CDI system, system uh, is, uh, we need we need uh, um, we, we, we need to introduce the CDI in device plugin and cut uh, runtime and cut agent. The first introduce the CDI in GPU device plugin. The D, the GPU device plugin is based on the Kubernetes GPU device plugin. And uh, when, we, uh, when we introduce the CDI in, in such device plugin, uh, before a device plugin server running drivers, GPU drivers uh, are bound from the host and the CDI stacks are generated for VPL devices. Like this. And then when a user when a user requests the one GPU uh, for port and the Kubernetes will schedule it on a suitable node, the uh, Kubernetes on the node will uh, delegate allocating allocating to device plugin. Device plugin will uh, select suitable GPUs and uh, uh, re uh, return uh, allocated response with the CDI devices with a list of uh, CDI devices which associated, uh, uh, associated with the IOMMU group uh, uh, of the GPUs assigned to the containers. And uh, the CDI devices will be forwarded to, to, uh, to, to uh, the next <coughs> run time. Next, introduce the CDI in other run time. Container D uh, consumes CDI devices and uh, do CDI injection and forward OCI spec to Kata. The next is step four. It will handle web devices with, uh, using modified OCI spec, then invoke device manager 
device manager uh, will handle device pass rule, device uh, pass rule and over team, device uh, PCI topology in the guest, and then do annotate container with annotations related to CDI devices. <coughs> it's important to point that annotation annotations use this uh, prefix CDI dot or PAS to uh, to specify CDI related annotations and uh, the P X point to I O M M U group ID and uh, the value of video.com GPU equals Y. Provide additional uh, device annotations and uh, uh, which indicating that the uh, GPU device is the is the wise uh, available GPU in guest PCI topology. The next one, a uh, uh, VPL device passed through and uh, annotation updated, the uh, container create uh, uh, request will be forwarded to card agent. Card agent will then uh, invoke set up a vendor devices to set up a vendor devices and the, and, and the vendor tools will be also called to generate CDI devices. Then handle CDI devices with the parse uh, annotation from runtime and uh, do a uh, CDI injection. The last step is create with the uh, modified OSS spec and run a container with uh, with the uh, with the GPU pass through and the drivers uh, driver drivers um, pass through the, uh, into container. The, we will demonstrate the CDI of uh, the use of CDI of GPU accelerate large language model uh, by deploying uh, by deploying uh, uh, a llama in Kubernetes uh, with Kata using GPU. And this co this, this, uh, this case will showcase the seamless migration from uh, for AI or machine learning. Uh, to Kata. Okay, so the next step is we will do a live demo here because all the CDI things we have introduced is already ready to use uh, in the community. So today we want to do a live demo with, uh, with the GMA, GMA2, GMA2 large metal we will, and we will running, running that with Olama. Olama. GMA, GMA2 is a uh, uh, newly open source uh, large 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 language <laughs> metal open source by Google, and then we will briefly introduce our environment for running this demo. Next page. Okay, we will running this demo with Kubernetes version 1.0.3 and Kubernetes 1.7, and. Uh, yeah, I have introduced about the, the, the device plugin stuff and we will use the device plugin that have the CDI devices support and also the Kata containers with the CDI support. Also, we have uh, we will really this demo on our NVIDIA GPU T4 model size. And you can see from, this is the whole YAML that we will run later. Uh, the only, there are only uh, one thing that is changed is only we, we will change the runtime class name from from uh, from RunC to Kata, and then this is all the things that need to change inside the CDI 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 GPU management uh, because we don't need to inject any other annotations. Also, we will use the image from the Olama, and then maybe we can start the demo. It is very interesting to do demo. <laughs> Maybe we can switch to the terminal. Because uh, the, the CDI GPU management uh, things we have introduced today, the code is all open source inside like for Kata Containers project or the Rastalvin project. So it is all useful inside the 
uh, the open source community. You should switch to the terminal. <laughs> we don't know what you have to write. Okay, this is the, 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 the machine with the GPU. And then, yeah. Uh, we can see that you have already applied the port YAML here, so that the port is already running here. It is called Olama, Olama Zero, this, this port. And then maybe you can show the NVIDIA SMI inside that port. Okay, first you, we could see the unit. The this is the guest kernel inside the Kama container. We can see it is five point one five. Oh, okay. Oh, this this one is running in the host, so it it got five point one five. And Kama container because it uses virtualization technology, so it has a different guest kernel. So then you can see that there is a different guest kernel. Here, version number is 5.10, so that we can know that we can actually start our Kata container in this different uh, uh, kernel version. And then maybe you can show the media SMR. Okay, it's quite large. Okay, so you okay? So we pass through one GPU here. Uh, one T4 GPU, T4 GPU, you can see it. With the media is my comment. The next step, we will show all the large language model we have, you, we, we could use, and there, there is G Lama 2 here. G Lama 2 here. Okay, so we let's go straight to the demonstration that we using this LLM. Maybe we can try to have a conversation with with he or she. Like, uh, what is what is wrong or anything? Have you entered the form? Have you entered? No? Okay, we can enter. Okay. Okay, it is loading the LM. <laughs> and you can see the GPU memory is kind of like fully used here. This is all inside the color container, inside that virtual machine. It's a box. And then we can have a little cute conversation there, like, do you know Swarm, which is the city here? And you can see from the media SMI, the GPU utilization is going up, and then it means that it's actually running with all the CDI uh, GPU metrics. Yeah. Thank you, and that's all for our introduction, our demo. Thank you.